Hey friends, today we're going to use Ableton to make complex patterns using MIDI effects and other fun devices. Um, check this out, here's my little, my little melody here. So nothing special, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at the MIDI tab, and MIDI effects are things that you put before instead of after your plugins. So in this case I have an operator, so I'm just going to drag, first one I'm going to try out is random. So if I play this, and I turn up the chance, So I'm getting random notes, right? <laughs> and a lot of them are not really fun random notes, actually. What you gotta do is if you wanna make some uh, coherent melodies, <laughs> you wanna also put in a scale. Scale is a device that basically takes what notes you throw at it and changes those notes into notes that would work within a scale. No way, scale. So in this case, um, you know, we could go through this and learn how to use it, but instead I'm just gonna show you something real quick. So you just grab yourself Let's say this, this song happens to be an F minor. So I'm gonna grab a C minor scale, okay? So this is the C minor preset, right? So I'm just gonna take the bass and move it up to F, all right? So as long as I, the bass is F, then this C minor preset will actually be F minor, right? So check it out. Right? Now let's say I had a song in C major. I would just grab, you know, or a song in A major. I'd grab a C major and move this up to A right? Just so you get it, all right? So I'm using C minor, and I'm moving it up to F, because this hap this melody happens to be an F. So now I can take up the chance and watch this. So all these notes are working now. So essentially what's, what random is doing is that every time there's a MIDI note or a message, um, it's based off what I've already played. Every time there's a note, beep, 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 it's going to then calculate a random, based on this chance, that a note's going to go up or down, right? So if I choose add, it's going to go up above the note that I played. Sub is going to go below the note I played, and by is going to go up or down, right? So... Right? So that's fun. So, you know, we we're, we have this original melody, and then if I turn the chance knob up, we're going to get different notes. So it's kind of just like jamming, right? So let's move on to another one. I'm just going to duplicate this track. This time, instead of using this melody, okay, what I can do is I can now play... I can just play random notes, and it's going to be in scale, right? So let's just go ahead and have some fun here. So... Right? So now I just have all these random chords and they happen to work. And the other thing I can do is I can just drag these chords around. And they're always going to work. No matter what happens, they're always going to work because I have this... The scale... They're always going to work because I have this scale right here, right? So, you know, I, I could also, if I wanted to go even farther, is I could grab random and just add a little bit more randomness happening to this chord. I'm gonna change this voice a little bit. Right? Okay, so now we can move on to the next one. So I'm just going to duplicate this again. And this time, we've got these two guys hanging out. We can also put an ARP before it. So an arpeggiator. So what an arpeggiator does is it receives MIDI input, and then it splits those chords that it's receiving into coherent arpeggiations or, uh, you know, sequences of notes. And it does that by choosing these style things. So I'm going to choose just up and down. And now that I've got these chords already input here, now I can get this kind of fun thing. I'm just going to scramble this voice up again and get something a little bit different. Why not? And now we should have something coherent and fun and also random because random is sitting after arpeggiator, right? So... <laughs> That's pretty sweet, right? So now, uh, another thing you can do is you can arpeggiator an arpeggiator, which is always fun. 
So in this case, I'm going to go down with this and I'm going to change the steps. And with this one, I'm just going to hold. When you turn on the hold, you get... Right, it's not stopping. Now check out what happens when you get another one going. It's kind of cool, it's got like a swung thing going on. So let's say you've got something really good going and you're like, wow, I mean, like, this is really fun. I mean, this is so good that I, I want to keep this stuff, you know, I want to compose with it. Well, what you can do is you can duplicate any one of these tracks that's kind of making results that you like. So let's just, let's do the most complex one because this will be the most fun. So we're going to duplicate this track and what you can do is delete the voice from it, right? And we'll start another MIDI track and I'll just grab this first operator. What I can do is I can send MIDI around Ableton, right? So what I could say is I could MIDI out to, or MIDI in from, either way, I'm going to send MIDI out to input 5, right? So now we have, as long as this track is armed, right, and I play this clip, this MIDI track is now playing this track, right? Okay, so, so, so what's so great about that is I can make another track and I can say, I'm going to receive MIDI from number four, right? And guess what? As long as it's armed, I can record the, the incoming notes. So now I have... Right? So now I've captured those random notes, and now I can use them to compose and do all kinds of other fun stuff. Okay? So that's kind of the brass tacks of using MIDI to kind of generate ideas. I mean, really, in a lot of ways, what we're doing is we're using Ableton to do kind of the heavy lifting, like all the processing, all the all the crazy stuff that, you know, us as musicians maybe don't want to always sit around and think about. Instead, we, what we want to do is kind of play like the selector and find the tracks that we like, the the musical hooks that we like the most, and then take those and and run with them, right? So, so with that concept in mind, the next thing we want to talk about is instead of using MIDI, we're going to shift over to using audio now. So this is... Here's some, some audio clips that I've made. Some piano chords, some drums. A weird drum. Right, okay, so... So now we've, we've got all this audio here, and so something that we want to be able to do is take this audio and use sequencers to slice it up, or maybe arpeggiators. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's, let's take this... Let's take this Rhodes right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to just... Go down to Slice to New MIDI Track. If you want to check out you know, a whole tutorial on slicing, I'll put it up here in the corner. Um, so in this case, the current clip region is 8 beats long. This will result in 16 slices. Let's go ahead and make this less. Let's sl I want to make 8 slices. All right, so here's, here's what we got going on. This current clip is now going to be 8 slices, right? So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to make a new track. And I'm going to actually just cut out the sequence that it spits out. When you slice any audio, you get presented with a drum rack, right? And this drum rack has some various controls, but essentially, at the end of the day, you've got this collection of slices, right? Um, so what we can do now is we can, maybe you've already thought of, of this already, we can grab an arpeggiator and put it before the roads and play some keys. And what those keys have to be are the ranges that we're looking at here. And so if I hover my mouse, you can see down there in the bottom, the bottom left-hand corner, it says C1, and then the top slice is what? G1, okay? So the only notes that I can play with this ARP that are going to make any sound are C1 through G1. So let's get that lined up. So now if I just hold C1, I get this, right? But if I hold kind of a chord, I get this. And if I involve a note that doesn't have a MIDI note in it, I can get these different rhythms, right? And so then you have all this fun kind of stuff you can do with these, like, gates. And, and you know, j just for the heck of it, I'll launch a beat so we can keep up uh, appearances. <laughs>
you know, then obviously changing the arpeggiator style is going to get you different stuff going on. So, so you can see this concept now. Now, if I had a random hanging out after this, then I can get these patterns that are, you know, they're 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 playing along. Let's do a simple one. So, if I turn the chance up, right, you're gonna get random results. but kind of oscillating around your original idea, right? Now what we can do is we can explore some other devices, and I, I've found two different um, Max for Live devices that are free. You can just download them if you have Max. And the fun thing about both of these is that the ranges of their outputs, these are random sequencers, the ranges of their outputs can be limited. So what that means is that if we're going to do any of this slicing, you know, let's just take this drum track and slice it. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Eight beats long. Let's go ahead and get 16 slices. Okay, so 16 slices. Here we go. I'm going to try to use the Turing machine. So a Turing machine's pretty fun. Basically, this is just, uh, it's a common thing in the modular synthesis world, but it's basically, it's a random sequencer. What I first need to do, again, is look at the first sample. That's C1, and the top sample is D sharp 2. So just right in here, C1. Sharp two. So what this is going to now do is it's going to, based on this, based on this clock setting, it's going to just start spitting out a random string of notes. Okay, and now we're going to get this kind of like chopped up drum pattern thing, right? I'll turn it up a little bit for you. Okay, so this is a, a whole bunch of nonsense, right? What's fun about the Turing machine is that I can choose a length of how long I want a sequence to be, and once something happens that I like, I can lock it in by turning the knob this way. What's so cool about this is that there's a varying degree of randomness between this point and this point. This is totally random when it's pointed up and completely locked in when it's all the way down. So check this out. Let's just... Right, so now we've got a sequence going. I've locked it in. Okay, let's do that again in the middle. Right, so that's a different kind of pattern. Okay, so as you can see, this is kind of fun. And if you go this way, you can lock in twice as long of a pattern. Okay, let's get something useful. Okay, there we go. Now we've got a pattern going, okay? You can make it shorter if you want. You can just do... Okay, so now I've got a little pattern going, right? And that's what the Turing machine can do. It's amazing. So let's try a different example. I'm going to take this piano riff and I'm going to slice it. We're going to look at doing... Let's just do, instead of making this long, let's just do eight slices, okay? So we're just going to do eight slices. I'm going to grab another Turing machine. And instead of making the clock that fast, let's make the clock half as fast. And what I have to do is also, remember, I have to, this is G1 is the highest note and C1 is the lowest note, so G1. Okay, so now I've, I've already got a pretty useful kind of fun sound here. Let's combine that with the, uh, with the drum loop. It's getting kind of avant-garde right now. So it'll make more sense when we have, when we have our initial rhythm that we were using, so... So we get something that's really nice. 
Oh, listen to that. That's great. Add some of our original. So let's check out uh, Metro Posec. So this is basically based off a of Metropolis sequencer, which is a really fun neural rack sequencer. Um, and in this case, you have you just feed it a clock, and again you have a limited range, right? So C3 to C4. This is great because what what this means for you is that you can do all that you know slicing action that we were doing before and just con confine your samples. Uh, to C3 to C4, or let's just go ahead and look at how this works melodically. So at this point it says you can add your own Ableton MIDI scale module here. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab a scale, slap it right there. Let's do the same thing before. We're going to, we want a minor scale, so it doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. We just choose C minor and then choose, we choose the root note right here, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and play this. Now there's three different switches. If you hit if any of these are high, highlighted in yellow, and you hit random, you get random events. Right, so that seems pretty super basic, right? Okay, and then you obviously have a, a chance that you can add octaves here. Right, that, that's whatever. That's pretty basic, right? But the next thing you can do is you can you can look at amounts. So trigger amount, what this does is that you can choose different, it's called ratcheting, you can choose different amounts of of repetitions of these notes. So check it out now. In fact, it'll make more sense if I turn the add random octaves down, because then you can really watch. Right? Now that might still seem pretty pretty boring and not that complex, but if I choose to randomize this feature, right? Listen to this now. And then the next thing we can do is add more complexity to this by changing the trigger mode. This is gonna be choosy about which of the ratchets it plays and which of the ratchets it doesn't. So if I hit randomize again, I get, <laughs> the first one is none, the second one is first, and so watch this. mess with this a little bit. So let's put that over some chords. Let's put that over this uh, the chords section here. So now we've got... Oops. So if I hit randomize and all three of these are randomized, we're going to constantly get new melodies to mess with, right? I'm just I'm just listening for things that inspire me. Like what what is it what what am I going to be able to extract from this that I really like, right? So again, yeah, with any of these devices, if they're making MIDI that you like, all you have to do is remove the the 
plugin that's making the sound, right? So the synthesizer or whatever. And then you can pipe that into a new MIDI track just by moving the device to another track and saying that the MIDI is coming in from Metro Pose Sec. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> captured that right so i this no longer needs to be taking midi and now this is just playing the midi that i got from this right so that's how you capture it okay well i hope you found this really useful and if not slightly nerdy <laughs> but this is a kind of a fun way to compose um if you like this kind of thing like comment subscribe thanks so much for watching everybody catch you next time